So, you've thought that you had enough salt already? Well, too bad, buddy, because you still have to go through this world one last time in order to ground out all of the remaining warp zones and bandages that this place has. And this is also the part of the game where warp zones will get a whole lot sneakier. Yeah, you have to wait here because the warp zone will rise underneath your feet. This warp zone really took me forever to find, but it's buddy time. And our new buddy will allow us to do jumps like this one. Say hello to Hugmo, aka the Ripoff, as he's referred to in the game, even though that the game he comes from was released in 2004. But yeah, he really looks like a disformed Meat Boy. I wonder if the people who made Meat Boy even was inspired by Hugmo. So yeah, Meat Boy unfortunately did not make a new friend here, but we're gonna have a brand new friend here and he's really likable. The main gimmick of Hongmo is double jumping, as he could do into the game that he comes from, but unfortunately these levels don't look or play too much like Jumper, it's not a really faithful representation of the original game that this is based on. In Jumper, for instance, you had arrows that you collected into the air in order to allow you to do additional jumps into the air. You had boxes, switch to push, and all sort of things like that. It was a little bit more complicated, was far more elaborate, even though the game was really basic. For instance, you will not even be able to control the height of your jumps, and there was no wall jumping neither. Which you have into this game. Now that we have Ogmo into her pocket, and yeah, by the way, I was not kidding about the rip-off things, this is really funny, I gotta say, but yeah, he'll be her main character in order to get a lot of the bandages into this world, and yeah, you can save yourself at the last second, but he's also useful for getting this warp zone. Oh boy, another Game Boy warp zone. These are always my favorite. Oh hey, it's the guy who made Fez, and who says that all Japanese games are huge ways and that gamers are humongous morons. And no, this isn't the third result on Google whenever you search for his name, so hooray for Philfish, and hooray for the worst warp zone of the entire game. I don't know, this warp zone feels particularly bland, and it doesn't help that the final level of the warp zone is the same thing as the first, only though that, well, they reversed it. But. The worst thing about Philfish is that, well, he's a Quebecer, just like yours truly, and unfortunately this kind of thing just makes me want to crawl into a hole, thinking that there are people like him who represent my province and country. Je m'excuse, on n'est pas tout fait de même, on n'est pas tout mongol comme ça! I just had to get that out. Warning. Millions of copies of this warp zones have been buried into the desert. So, continuing the trend of warp zones I don't like is this level. I don't know, it's just a little bit too minimalistic for my taste, but this warp zone remains important for one aspect, by showing you that wall jumps will allow you to jump a whole lot higher than doing a regular jump. But the weird thing about this is that doing the first jump in order to get the bandage is by far the hardest part of this warp zone. Then the other jumps that you have to do are a whole lot easier. However, they're mandatory and not an optional thing that you can do in order to gain additional stuff. Yeah, notice how bigger the ramp is in order to do your wall jump. So, just in case that you weren't panicked enough by playing to this level, guess what? This is where the final warp zone of the world is. And obviously, getting back is quite an asshole, especially here, this is the hardest part of going back to the warp zone in time before it closes. Because there is a huge chasm here and it can be pretty tricky to avoid the last rocket launcher that you have to deal with. But once that you've done that, the reward is yours. Super Meat Boy, with more gears and less saw blades. While I didn't like most of the warp zones that you find in the Salt Factory, thankfully this is the exception to the rule and I really really like this one. And coincidentally enough it's called Contra, so it's named after a good game so maybe this is why they wanted to make this place real nice. Too bad however that this warp zone also has its weak link here because I don't know. This one level is pretty uneventful as you can see here. I don't know, they really should have done something in order to improve the difficulty here a little bit because, well, you might be thinking, okay, but 
If the person breaks a block here, then this becomes challenging, but it's really easy to avoid breaking the block, as long as you're careful. Oh, we have a skull right here, oh. <laughs> yeah, we have had a skull, and it spelled my doom properly. So remember kids, the moral of the story is stay on the middle of the platforms. And make sure that you jump off before you plummet down a pit. So is it gonna be the first warp zone to actually spell my doom and make me restart the entire thing? Well, we're gonna have to find out. Especially because I still have to get the bandage here and... Whew, that was a pretty close one. And here we have Gil's cousin right here. So, with all regular warp zones out of the way, time to head for the glitch world using a character that I'll talk a bit more about later. Yeah, when I recorded the video showcase for this one character that I'm gonna talk about later, the warp zone unfortunately just appeared, so we're gonna have to deal with that. So, here comes the Salt Factory glitch world, which mercifully ended my life really early. As far as I'm concerned, this is probably the hardest warp zone of the entire game, as far as the glitch world is concerned. Either this one, or the forest. And maybe the hospital, I don't know. They're almost all really hard as far as I'm concerned. Except for, like, the next glitch world that we're gonna see, but that's another story. Oh hey, we finally found a warp zone which spelled my doom. So the only thing that we can do is... Be scared and then go back and attempt this world again! So yeah, as you can see, having three lives onto the glitch world is pretty meaningless considering that, well, there's only one stage into this and whenever you failed it, you can simply enter the entire level again, so yeah, lives are a pretty moot point and it just serves to slow down the game a whole lot. Okay, no, I'm not gonna die the same way than I did earlier. So what is harder between the open areas and this drop? Take your pick. I'm gonna go with the drop because, well, at this point of the game, you might still be learning how to fully master air control here, and this is the first part of the game which fully demands perfect control from pretty much any standpoint. And just to make matters even worse, okay, <laughs> you botch up a jump like that and you end up into the pit, but no, the moment that you hit the bottom of this chasm, well, basically, you just get shot by the rocket launcher, so you basically have to jump again in order to not die, so you gotta stay alert. Yeah, like I said, the rocket launcher can get you all the way to the spikes. And yeah, I'm not too sure about the point of the vertical elevator, because it's a whole lot faster to wall jump. And wall jumping also prevents the possibility of having stray rockets, which can fuck you over really bad, as you can see here. I've been lucky to avoid it, but thankfully the level ends pretty easy. The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up meat. And with that said, we're finally done with the warp zone. And in order to prevent further salt injuries, time to patch things up with some bandages. Salt Factory becomes the one part of the game where bandages as a whole will get a whole lot harder to get. Okay, I didn't really say anything here, but getting this bandage removes any possible chance of getting grade A+, plus, so essentially it's just a force level restart. So time to see how much these change the level after all, yeah. As I've told, the level is almost exactly the same in both the light world and the dark world counterpart, only though they had its saws at the end. And some of the wall jumps that you have to pull in the middle of the level are far narrower. And into this chapter, Ong Mode doesn't fail to make himself useful one bit. He may be a ripoff, but his heart is made out of gold. As a general rule, into the light world bandages will not be too hard to get, but there will be one or two exceptions where things will be quite cryptic, just like it was the case with the warp zones. And that was a pretty close call right here, but yeah, this is what I'm talking about with things being a little bit too cryptic. You remember this hole through the sauce? Yeah, you have to jump in between because yeah, the bandage is waiting for you behind. And it, it even gets carried through the level at, as well, so you can get it anywhere, but the beginning of the level is by far the easiest part to do this in. Now, there are a couple of characters into the game which could allow you to get this bandage far earlier by jumping through the hole into the ceiling right away instead of having to backtrack all the way through the level and almost dying at the end like that, but other than that, this is what you have to do. You walk onto the top and you have absolutely no hindrance toward the bandage. 
Now, this bandage can also be pretty tricky because obviously you have the long as well waiting sequence right here. You must not touch bandage girl because otherwise you'll finish out of all. And the rocket launcher can shoot you all the way to the chamber as well. So this adds furthermore to the challenge. But just don't take things too fast and you should have no problems. Thankfully this bandage is pretty much a giveaway, well, the level is still pretty hard to navigate because, well, the breakable floor can be a huge pain and the final jump that you have to do can be pretty tricky because, yeah, you have to jump in the middle all like that, but the bandage itself is really easy. Alright, time to get this bandage the complicated way because, yeah, it is possible to grab this bandage as Meat Boy using the accelerator conveyor belt in order to launch yourself all the way to the top, but the easiest way to do it is just to use Ogmo and use your double jump in order to jump out of the sawsways just whenever you finally collect the bandage. And uh, ah, Jesus Christ, I really can't believe I botched up the end of this level, but we're gonna get back here really quickly. You can get this bandage in two separate ways. You can either do a daring launch all the way up using the conveyor belt without touching the salt, but it's a whole lot easier to simply do a wall jump, as was demonstrated into this uh, four bit uh, warp zone that you saw earlier into the video. Now, this one bandage is a pain in the ass. There's a whole bunch of characters that you can use in order to get this bandage, but the challenge remains completing the level. Ho ho ho! I just decided, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna brag in order to try and get the bandage as Meat Boy just in order to show my mastery at this game, but you will see really soon that this decision will bite me in the ass horribly. The following is pretty much a representation of what it's like to try and get this as Meat Boy. And I swear this is 100% authentic. It could happen to you. All of these last second failures and also all of these uh, Ah, fuck this, I'm picking another character. Type of moments. Yeah, once again, you'll want Ongmo in order to get this bandage, because once again, he makes this level a complete breeze, and also his double jump is just high enough so that you can get the bandage, but you still have to deal with avoiding the key. But if you don't want to deal with avoiding the key, I'm pretty sure it's possible to launch yourself up from the left conveyor belt and manage to do the jump all the way to the top like this, because yeah, the double jump makes it a whole lot easier to get this key, even when you're screwing up big time. And instead of having a million failures, you can only have three of them. So essentially you can now see why I didn't do a proper showcase of Ogmo when I finally unlocked him because hey, it turned out that we're gonna have a full showcase of him during the bandage collection. Now, bandages like these can be collected as Joseph, but I don't know, I just feel that using Ogmo is a much better choice in the end. If only because he's a whole lot more fun to handle and play as. He's usually more worth using whenever you have to deal with things that make you rise a whole lot fast into the air, like fans or huge rows of conveyor belts. As for this bandage, you go either fast or really slow, it's all a matter of patience. Now, welcome to the one bandage which gives a whole lot of grief to people who are playing this game, because for a while this will be the hardest bandage to collect into the entire game. Yeah, because the bandage is all the way back to the start, we have to make our way through the entire maze of rocket launchers and breakable blocks a second time, and then you have to go all the way down here again, so basically you just dig a path through so that none of the rocket launchers will be able to shoot at you all at once, and with some practice and perseverance you can do it. And now my claims of saying that this was the hardest bandage really look goofy because I've only had one death. But here comes Nyjah, which is probably one of the most beloved unlocked characters into the game because, well, her special ability is an air dash. You can do it once while she's jumping, however her ability will reset whenever she ends up bonking onto a ceiling, and she's also really hard to control. She's really not a character for the beginners. You really will need a whole lot of practice in order to be able to get a grasp on her controlling a whole lot, but once that you can do well with her, the times that you can have on two leaderboards will be magnificent. And you can also pull off many stunts and, okay, or try pulling them out because, once again, this is not easy to do. But her her dash allows you to take many shortcuts that otherwise will be inaccessible, yeah. Remember this hole, it's really easy to get there whenever you get the grasp of it. 
She also has a levitation move that allows her to fall a whole lot slower to the hair, which I didn't showcase because I usually never use it, but I'm not very good with this character. So here, I'm gonna show some footage of somebody who's really good at Nyjah. Animator Z from the Something Awful forums has done a whole lot of Nyjah speedruns, and well, you can see them at the URL that you see in the bottom of the video, and well, it's something to witness, I'm telling you. Basically, in the right hand, she pretty much becomes speedrunner delight. Well, unfortunately, her price at 60 bandages is not as appealing. You get 4-bit Meat Boy with even less colors and pretty much the same handling and physics of all of the other Meat Boys that we had to see so far. Simple and effective. But either way, we are done with the Salt Factory. Stay tuned for next chapter as Meat Boy finally dies and ends up into a realm where no meat, where no boy who's made out of meat and who has no skin ever came back alive and will be brutally maimed and slashed into pieces. Hell!